Hello, everyone. This is John Barron with Poets of Quants. Welcome to our one-on-one interview with an alum of Berkeley Haas School of Business, Noah Elan. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, John. Now, I should just say, Noah graduated from Berkeley in 2014, and in the six years since, she's established herself in a very successful tech marketing career. She started with Square, then went to Lyft, and now she's with a really cool that's trying to develop autonomous vehicles called Cause Cruise. And it's in the Bay Area. Uh, and uh, GM has a partial ownership. Yep. So that sounds like a really exciting job. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, we are in the Bay Area based in San Francisco. And just the idea of trying to market a product before there is a product in the market, right, is a very interesting challenge to have but uh, i always tell my, my team there'll be a moment that everything we say is download the app download the app take a ride and now we're able to really talk about the vision and why this is important for the world so i feel pretty lucky now you graduated with a joint major in econ and psychology from ben Gurion university what made you go for the mba in the first place uh, so I studied econ and psychology for undergrad, and then I went and became a marketer at Procter & Gamble, which was probably like the best school to learn marketing. I learned so much about strategy and a com competitive analysis. But there's something about, you know, p g it would take 18 months to launch a product, right? Like what I launched was something else that someone else's work when they scoped it, and what I scoped was someone else's work to execute. And there was something about wanting to move a lot faster and be in a much higher pace environment. So I knew I wanted to move into tech and I knew that an MBA would be like a really good opportunity for me to actually, you know, change, change direction, change industry. And Berkeley was like a great choice for that. Yeah, totally. Because if you want to go into the tech field, uh, what better place really? Yeah. And, you know, I think that's like the biggest thing that I underestimated when I was looking at uh, schools. I underestimated how location was important. You know, I was looking at the ranking and, you yeah. know, everyone has a tech club and everyone has alumni in all these companies. But really being in the Bay Area, like location has a huge impact. And yeah. being in the Bay Area means that you're able to go to Google for lunch like three times a month if you want. And you have like, you know, 20 of my classmates work in every one of these companies. So just like the scale and the access is unparalleled. So geography, I often say, is destiny when it comes to MBA. Oh, really? And you know, like you just also need to like own the downsides of it, right? Like I think it's really important to like own the, you know, the, the West Coast schools definitely are less strong if you want to go into, you know, Wall Street. Yeah, of course you can do it, but it's completely different like mindset and mentality. Yeah, true. So you go to Berkeley, uh, how does it match up with your expectations? So can I tell you the story about how I decided to go to Berkeley? I'd love to. Okay. So both me and my husband, we went together to Berkeley. Wow. You were dual admit, both of you together? Yeah. That's hard in and of itself. <laughs> oh, my and, God. And we were, and we were trying to, we, we got into two schools, one East Coast, one West Coast. And we were traveling in India at the time. We got that admissions. And, you know, it was really hard because, you know, they're very different, different rankings. Both of them were, like, amazing for different reasons. And we would go back and forth, like, oh, this is a better school because of that. This is a better school because of that. Well, if it's a bigger class, is it good or not good? There's, like, so many questions that we had. And we couldn't make the decision. And at one point I looked at him and I said, Romy, what if we like flip the coin? Like, let's just flip a coin. You know, there's like a benefit to both. So we take a coin and we say like school A heads, Berkeley tails. And we flip the coin and it goes and it lands on heads. And like, we're going to the other school, you know, like school A, we're going there. And we like high five and, you know, have a, you know, coffee or beer and 15 minutes later, Romy looks at me and he says, you want to flip the coin again? And I think <laughs> for us, like that was the sign, right? Like, if, and I think what made us decide is really, you know, Berkeley has the four defining principles. Yes. And, and we saw them everywhere. You know, everyone has values. But when we went to visit Berkeley as part of the process, like we saw it, I remember this, one of the students, Andrea, 
she took us like all the interesting interested students to lunch in this faculty house in Berkeley, which is like, you know, that's how like you imagine, you know, PhDs created like these theories and you have lunch in the faculty house. And she told us about how she took her classmates to Brazil to visit and how she rethought their like trip. And it was just like so inspiring to see the defining principle in, in everywhere that in everyone that we met and everywhere that we visited. So it was really, uh, that's what's kind of what convinced us that it would be a great fit. Was there one defining principle that resonated most for you? Um, you Confidence know, it, without attitude. Yeah, yeah, it is true. It is my, okay. yeah, good, good call. How did I know? I, you know? I think as an Israeli, challenge of the status quo is in like my blood, right? But yes, conf, like, you know, one of the big things that I think it impacted me, Haas, is my ability to know where I thrive and really like recognize that I I had such an amazing time at Haas and I made so much impact and I was leading a bunch of clubs and I don't think that I would do the same in a more competitive environment because there was something about the way that I came to my classmates and said, I want to create this course. And everyone was like, go for it. We'll help you. And I went to the, I remember, you know, I, I led this 600 person conference and it used to be in Berkeley, but I wanted to move it to San Francisco. And I came to the Dean and I said, Dean Lines, I want to move it to San Francisco. And you just said, yeah, they like build the plan and I'll totally be behind it. And just this idea of like, you can always challenge the status quo and you can, nothing is like, this is how we do it. It has been like an incredible, I don't know, growth engine for me. Rich Lyons uh, was the dean who came up with the uh, principles yeah. and put them through. Understanding that culture is a really important part of the MBA experience. Yeah. So um, were there big surprises for you in an MBA program? Because, um, you know, even though you worked at Procter and Gamble and you, you took an econ, uh, sort of, uh, track back at Ben Gurion, I wonder if in fact there were things about the MBA and the program itself that maybe you didn't expect that really surprised you. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think I was surprised just by like how, you know, I think about like my classmates and even today, you know, especially if you get to an MBA, you're already like top of your class in whatever other environments you are. And just seeing like the, the difference, like the, the scale, it's like the success of people in my class was amazing. And just seeing how like, even my like shadow points, the shadow sides of like how sometimes I think small or sometimes I think within boundaries. So a lot of like what surprised me is just like how much more I can learn, you know, students always, but the, how much more I can like learn and how much I have things that actually stop me from succeeding. Right. Now, what was it like to go through the program with a husband? A I know. Spouse? Were you competitive with each other? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think the best tip that I heard about being partners and doing either like the same job or the same program is that you have to kind of find very separate tracks so you don't really compete about anything. So we were, he did the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial kind of route and did a lot of courses there. And I did more, a lot of like the public speaking and leadership and a lot more of like the, those kind of skills. Um, but, you know, he's like my best, party partner, right? And like my best kind of like adventure partner. So it was really incredible to be able to do it with him and experience it together and have like the same friends, you know? Yeah, I bet. No, I, I, I'm sure that it would actually enhance the experience, yeah. frankly. And did you have a favorite course? So, um, I, so I have like a favorite professor, I guess. Uh, Don Moore, uh, Professor Don Moore is he's a behavioral economist or probably he's like a psychologist major, but he does a lot of behavioral econ 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 economy things. And he teaches a core class called, oh, I forgot it. Uh, uh, well, never mind the course class, but it really talks about like decision-making and biases and how people make, uh, this, uh, how people like make decisions and how, how can we be like better leaders being aware of what's happening. Right. And so I kind of followed him wherever, whatever course he took. So a, he did another course about him. Um, I forgot all the topics, but 
he just he just launched a, he just published a book about decision making and he's just been one of these professors that I'm like learning so much as a leader about kind of being aware of your blind spots and being like a more inclusive leader by having awareness of what's happening. Uh, you're like me. I'm a total believer in you pick your courses on the basis of the professor, not what is being taught, incidentally, because <laughs> a masterful teacher can have an incredible influence on your life. Yeah, totally. I really agree with that. You know, another one that I think it was really impactful, it, this was like the first course that you took. It was called Leadership Communication. Oh. And, and it's the first course you take, and it's about public speaking. And, you know, as especially coming from Israel, like I was terrified about that uh, course. So I wasn't into like, you, ha you have a small group of maybe eight, 10 people and you, every week you stand in front of them and you give a talk and they kind of give you feedback. And I was like terrified of that. <laughs> I'm really more into the positive affirmation aspect. But what the court Worthington, which was the teacher, what he did really well was he built safety and created this trust be between all the people. So you, you, my biggest learning was my biggest learning was how all these people that were around him were actually cheerleaders for me, right? Like they wanted me yeah. to succeed. Like they weren't actually gonna criticize me. And even I just like an hour ago, I came out of presenting to our like to the new recruit recruits of Cruz as part of their onboarding. And like the moment before I started, you know, I had this like, oh my God, I'm gonna present and I hope I know everything. And I reminded myself at what I learned there, which was like everyone wants you to succeed. Like everyone's actually cheering for you on the other side. So just like be bold and be brave and go for it. So totally. Now reflecting back on the experience, how did it really change you? The person you went in um, in the program, and then the person who came out of the uh, program, same person or different? I know. How do you even recognize yourself? Uh, uh, I think it's funny. I feel like my answer when people, sometimes I think about what, like the value that I got, it doesn't sound as big what I, like the biggest thing that comes to mind, but it was huge. I think there was like this confidence or this knowing that came out of the program. Like I just like know my value and I just like know, there's something about like just knowing that all the things that I learned, there's just like this constant kind of like, I don't know, like groundedness, something you know, about the confidence that I got from the program which is a combination of all the skills that I learned, right? Like the public speaking and the networking and the connections and the leadership, like all of those are kind of merged into this like core belief that like I'm here to do good things and I have the skills for it. That's, that's a great feeling to have. Yeah. I think self-confidence is an important part of success, frankly. Um, so how helpful was Haas and setting you up for a new career. You obviously made a pivot from yeah. consumer packaged goods into tech. It obviously was successful. You also chose that you didn't want to go into a big company environment. You wanted either an early stage or startup kind of company, uh, which is a lot more, actually it's harder on some level, but it's more fun for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, how did Berkeley prepare you for that? Yeah, you know, I even got the job thanks to like a Hasi from my, my class. It was really hard. I couldn't believe how hard it was to actually move into tech. I thought, you know, I got the MBA and I had the network. And yes, like I got so many no's at the beginning for like six months. People wouldn't even interview me. And it was really harsh, even with like getting people to submit my application, like internally, it was really, really difficult. And and just like just having the network of people that believe in me and like constantly like push for me and i got the job at square when antonio my classmate he just like went to the hiring manager at square and was like you, you should interview her maybe her resume isn't doing a good job but like you should definitely just talk to her and he just like got me into the interview and you know then i got the job but at the end of the day like your network and the people that are there to like support you when it doesn't go well and give you feedback on what's happening is like the way that I moved into tech and then was able to move to the other companies or like I have, I had alums from Berkeley and every company that I went to my, actually both of my managers, both at Lyft and now at Cruise were Hasis in a weird way. So it was just like that, that again, wow. like the network is incredible. So you're a testament to the value of an MBA network. Yeah. And you often talk about how important that network is, uh, but you're living it. Yeah, really. It's pretty incredible. 
Well, listen, good luck to you and your, the rest of your career. You're off to a great start. You've worked for three amazing companies and uh, you look like you're having a hell of a good time. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Stay safe in this uh, weird time. Oh, yes, indeed. Noah, thank you. This thank is John you know Byrne with Paul You've been watching Noah Elan, who is working for Cruz in the Bay Area, a graduate of Berkeley's Hot School of Business. Thanks for watching.